Hi everyone, welcome back to the Book Bakht channel. I'm Bakhtawar. I do bookish sort of content, book reviews, hauls, book casts, book discussions, things like that. Today I'm doing a, a lockdown haul. This is, uh, I think, going to be part one because I'm waiting on a few orders. Um, these, are the, these are the books that I got from Readings, which is a very famous bookstore in Lahore. Unfortunately, I was one of those people that um, made their orders before the sale. <laughs> because I didn't know that they would they would have one. So yeah, th these are the books that I picked up. Um, obviously, I have bought um, quite a few more. Um, since this lockdown started, so I'm going to be doing be filming hauls on that as well. Um, this is the first one. Um, this is like a short story. This was actually very cheap. Uh, this is How the Marquis Got His Coat Back by Neil Gaiman. So this is a short story. Obviously, I haven't read it, but it was so cheap that I was like, I have I have to buy this. Then we have uh, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Uh, obviously, I have read this one before, but I didn't have it because I think the copy that I used to have was either a library copy or something like that. So I wanted to pick it up because I'm, I might review it, that's why. This is a really, really beautiful sort of... How do you put it? This is an entire thesis, if you will, on, you know, the values that people have. Do you attach value to wealth? Do you attach it to beauty? Do you attach it to immortality? This person attaches it to all three and thinks that the evil that he does goes unnoticed, except that it doesn't and is recorded in, in this magical, fantastical painting which records all his sins and wrongdoings and in the end, out of the painting, or is the painting itself, emerges a monster which, you know, must then be destroyed. So this is actually, this deserves a whole video on itself. If you haven't read it, it's really short. It's about 217 pages. Definitely give it a read. This is the um, version that's published by Readings itself. So um, it's very, it's very cheap. Now I've been sort of on the search of older Pakistani authors, ones that maybe haven't necessarily been as mainstream. I wouldn't go as far as to say um, obscure, but maybe sort of people of my generation don't really know too much about them and uh, maybe they're really, they're considerably older now than more contemporary authors. So I've been sort of looking that up now. Unfortunately, I've actually not found a lot of books that were in the readings database for that or in any other bookstore. This is uh, Meatless Days by Sara Soleri. I think this is an autobiographical work. I think she has a couple of novels as well, which none of, I've never read anything by her, but apparently she uh, is quite brilliant. And um, she's a professor at some university in the States. I'm not sure. But anyway, she had a Welsh mother and um, a Pakistani father, and her father was a very famous journalist. Uh, maybe during the 80s. I'm definitely going to give this a read and keep you posted. Then we have, along the same vein, another Gulmohor tree by Ahmed Hussain. Again, Ahmed Hussain is a Pakistani author, but I think he's spent very little time in Pakistan. I think he moved to the UK when he was um, 15 or something. But he, he comes and goes because I've seen quite a few talks of his in the Karachi Literature Festival and things like that. So um, th this is a novel that he published in 2009. He has like four or five others as well. So I I've never read anything by him, so I was really curious. Now, I, mean, I, was, I was looking actually for his other novels, but I didn't find them either in Liberty Books or in Readings or anywhere else. So that's, that's strange and unfortunate, but I found this one, so I'm going to give it a read. Then we have The Sellout by Paul Beatty. This uh, obviously won the Man Booker Prize in 2016, was it? It's, um, it's this satire, it's this black comedy sort of on the plight of the black people, but he's obviously made it very funny. And I'm, I'm, I'm almost halfway through actually, because I, uh, I, I read it as soon as I got it. And oh, I've, I've had all of these books for like a couple of weeks. I just didn't have time to film. Now he really focuses on the psychological aspect of being an African-American in today's time. And he sort of really delves deep into human history for it. And obviously also, you know, where it starts, really, the psychology of it. And it's it's really funny. It, it got a bit dry somewhere in between, so I don't know how it's going to pan out. But it was really good. Um, I don't really buy books based on whether they've been, as, as many people do, whether they've been long-listed or short-listed or won the Man Booker Prize. I don't necessarily buy books like that. I sort of recommend, uh, I sort of um, focus on recommendations from people that I know, or books that sometimes I randomly come across. So uh, again, I, I can't speak to it um, until I've finished it, so then... So definitely watch out for a review for this one. Next we have The Mercies by Kiran Millwood Hargrave, 
which uh, apparently I think came out this year, maybe in January or February, but uh, it took a bit, a bit of time to come to Pakistan. And oh my God, look at this. Look at how beautiful this is. I mean, it's a treat to read something like this. This apparently, again, I've never read anything from this author. Um, I think she primarily writes children's fiction. I think this is her first, like, you know, more adult offering, if you will. And I think this, um, from what I've read, sort of the blurb and stuff like that, it's it's supposed to be the most epic feminist, you know, drama of all time because it's based on a Norwegian island in which there's some sort of storm in which all the men die and now the island is just filled with women and they must survive and stake their claim and then I think they may be invaded or something. I'm not 100% sure. Again, I haven't read it so I can't be sure. But... I mean, it looks beautiful. I've heard good things about it, and I'm really looking forward to this. Um, this author actually is, is relatively young. I think she's only 30 years old or something. So brilliant, yeah. Lastly, we have uh, American Gods by Neil Gaiman. This is a very, uh, it's not based on a popular TV show. Um, the popular TV show is based on this novel. I think it's, uh, as far as I know, I have not read it, but um, it's supposed to be a, f uh, it's, it's a fantasy novel in which, you know, you have these titan-esque characters which are based on things like modern technology and internet and maybe giving like a physical form to the phenomena that we um, experience, something like that. It's supposed to be one of his best works. I, I do like Neil Gaiman quite a bit, so um, it was recommended to me by a friend, so I thought I'd pick it up. And yeah, I'll keep you posted on how I get along with this one as well. Please uh, consider subscribing and follow me on Instagram to, you know, you know, stay on track with any other hauls and videos that I do. I have tons of reviews planned and um, I'll see you next time. Take care of yourself.